Hello, I'm Krista West and I am a professional tailor and I released a line drapery video a couple of years ago that has become very popular on YouTube, to my huge surprise. And many of you have emailed me and asked for me to cover two more things. And one is how to cut fabrics with motifs and the other is how to make basic curtains. And today I have a project in which I'm gonna cover both of those things. So I'm going to start by covering how to cut with a motif and how to also fishtail if you're making a pair of curtains. And then I'm gonna show you how to make a basic unlined curtain panel. So this project is actually curtains for my bathroom. We have a newly renovated bathroom and I wanted to put something in there that was a little bit more casual. So I didn't want a line drape. I wanted something that was, um, this is a linen fabric, a little lighter, a little more light coming through the fabric as the curtains were pulled to the sides, not too heavy because it's a smaller bathroom. This is a 1923 home. So I chose this fabric, but as you will notice, this fabric has a very challenging motif. And if you've tried to buy drapery fabric, you may notice in the notes when you go to buy drapery fabric that it will give you both the vertical repeat and the horizontal repeat. And so I wanted to cover a little bit about that because motif cutting can be one of the more challenging things when you're making drapes. But there's some just general rules that you can follow to make it easier on yourself. Now, I am working at my large cutting table. When you are working on large panels of fabric like this, you need to see things laid out. If you do not have a large cutting table, use the floor. Uh, you know, move a carpet out of the way, make some room clean the floor and do it on the floor. But you really need to be able to kind of see the scope of what you're cutting before you get to the sewing part. So to start out with, I laid out my fabric and I discovered, I found my line that I wanted to cut along and I cut it. You'll notice that this motif has little arrows that repeat every so often. This is the vertical repeat. So on this fabric, okay, be careful. This has arrows every five and a half inches, but you'll notice that this motif repeats every other, every other arrow. Okay. So look, take a good step back, look at your fabric. And when we measure that, we see that the point from this motif to the, its exact corresponding matching motif is in this case, 11 and a quarter inches. That's the vertical repeat. So for example, if you have a curtain that needs to be a certain length, you figure out what the length is with your top seam allowance, with your bottom hem seam allowance, and you figure out what that number is, okay? But then you have to make sure that you order enough fabric by the vertical repeat. So for example, if your curtain needs to be 90 inches long, or you need a piece of fabric that's 90 inches long with your seam allowances, and your fabric has a 10 inch seam allowance, you're probably gonna wanna buy 100 inches of fabric just to be on the safe side, because that fabric, to be able to match other panels, you have to be able to get to the next repeat so that you can make things match. So that is vertical repeat. Horizontal repeat is a distance from one motif to the next this way. And so for example, on this one, from the one little flower here to its corresponding little flower here is about 17 inches. That is not as important in drapery panels because you, most of the time in a drapery panel, you're using the entire width of the fabric. But what you really wanna watch for is that vertical repeat. So for example, on this fabric, I only needed 58 inches for each curtain panel, but I had to order four yards of fabric because of the vertical repeat. So that's the first thing to understand about vertical repeat. So now I cut my first curtain panel and now here's, so that's vertical repeat. What I want to show you next is what's called fishtailing. And what this means is this fabric, if you look at this fabric, if I made two curtains exactly the same, if I basically cut one panel out and then used it to cut another panel out on the same motif lines, I would have curtains where all the arrows go in one direction. And I don't want that in my bathroom. In my bathroom, I want one curtain to have the arrows going this way 
and one curtain of the arrows going this way. So I started by cutting my first panel out. So I cut this panel out first, and then what I did is I put a post-it note at the top, marking it top left. That way I'm sort of like visually oriented. I'm like, okay, I know what I'm doing here. That's top left. But now I need to cut the top right panel. And to make that match, there's kind of an easy way you can do this. And it really just involves laying out the fabric and getting some weights. So if you don't have pattern drafter weights, um, just grab a couple of cans of canned goods, like uh, the 28 ounce cans work great. So use those if you don't have other pa like pattern weights. If you sew a lot, I recommend that you invest in some pattern weights. They're not that expensive and they're a really great tool. Okay, so what I've done here, I've laid out the fabric for the next section I'm gonna cut. Here's the first curtain that I, that I cut. And we can see that now the arrows are going to be going in opposite. They're both gonna be pointing out. So this panel is going out this way and this panel is going out that way. This is actually my right side, which is fine. If you have two curtains, as long as the arrows are going the direction you want, you can choose which one you want to put on the right side and which one you put, want to put on the left side once you're finally hanging the curtains. Um, for example, if I want the arrows to go facing each other, then I'll put this panel on that side, which is what I'm planning on doing. But if I get it in there and I'm like, well, actually, maybe it would look better the other way, we'll just simply take the panels down and reverse them. Now, so what I do here is I'm looking... And I'm looking to see, okay, here's this little design here. My little arrowhead is here and here's the corresponding one. So I made a mark here and I'll cut that next. And then I laid the fabric up like this and I'm looking to make sure it all matches. And then I made my line here and I've got a mark here to cut that. So I'll set this panel aside in just a minute. I'll, I'm gonna set this panel aside before I sew it, but now I can cut this panel. And it will be the right, the right, um, it'll be the right orientation for that curtain. And it's really nice if you can cut like down the middle of the motif because you don't really need to put a marking line in place. You can just cut down the middle. You're just basically cutting through the middle of every, of every motif. And again, the floor is great if you don't have a bigger table. Um, another thing you can do for smaller, le le a little bit less wide fabrics is you can use a conference table. And that's where those 28 ounce cans of like canned tomatoes come in handy again. You can basically set the conference table on 28 ounce cans to get the table up high enough so it doesn't hurt your back while you're cutting. Okay, so I'll finish cutting this one. And I always save all of my um, drapery fabric leftovers. They're great for lots of different things um, because you oftentimes have these like little five, six inch pieces of really, really awesome fabric. So this, for example, you can turn into like a portion of a pillow. You could use it for a pocket on a bag, like no fabric gets wasted. So. Now we're gonna move over to the machine and I'm gonna take one of these panels and we'll start actually sewing the drape. I'm gonna find my top, my little top post-it note so I remember which one is the top. And the first thing I'm gonna start doing, this is exactly the same as if it was the line drapery, is I am going to take non, or woven or um, woven interfacing or drapery crinoline, whichever you prefer. And I'm going to basically set that a half, about a half to three quarters of an inch. But on this one, about, about a half an inch down. And I'm going to press that in place. That is going to act as a stabilizer to the top panel and give the drapery pins a place to bite. So you need to have a place for those drapery pins to go so that you don't tear your fabric. When I get to the end, I'm going to trim the interfacing. I do not want the interfacing to go into the seam allowance. Then we're going to press that. 
And now I'm going to come back this way. That's the one thing with, with drapes and curtains. You're going to be doing a lot of moving around on your ironing board. And for everyone who's going to ask about my iron, uh, I actually had to do a part two video just because of the iron. This is a high steam professional boiler iron. It's what a lot of um, tailors like myself use because it holds steam for about eight hours. I can fill up the tank and it'll go for about eight hours. Many of you have had the, uh, what shall I say, joy of trying to find non-auto shut off home irons. That's a whole thing. So if you sew a lot, they can be a really good investment. I will tell you though, that they are not, they are not inexpensive. So they run about four or $500. Um, if you sew professionally that you pay for it within just a few weeks because they make you so much faster. Um, you're not waiting around for your iron to heat up. And... Now I'm just pressing down over that same. I'm pressing that in place. Okay, great. And that's pressed. Okay. Now I'm going to go and press in the bottom hem. So this part is very much like making a line drapery. <clears throat> For the bottom hem, I like a nice deep hem on my curtains. So I tend to press over about on this one because of the fabric, that this fabric is thick because of the machine embroidery on it. So I'm pressing over about three quarters of an inch first and then I'll press over another four inches. You can do a four inch doubled hem on the bottom of your curtain. That is a great decision if you are using a lighter fabric. So if you're using like a lighter cotton or a lit or a sheer or linen or something like that, definitely put that four inch doubled hem in your curtains because it looks really nice, really professional and really nice. But here the fabric is so thick, I don't really need it. So now I'm taking my seam gauge and I'm marking my four inches and I'm pressing that in place and just getting this set like that. Okay, and I'll go all along. Fabrics that have embroidery or any sort of embellishment are a little harder to work with. Um, fabrics that people don't typically think of as drape fabrics but can make really great drapes are uh, wools. I actually made a little pair of curtains for um, a uh, for our, um, for our truck camper that actually are Pendleton wool. And they're, they're very classy, they're very cute. And they're just like basic little curtains, but they're made out of that really gorgeous vintage Pendleton wool. So we have both of those placed. It's easier to press these in now because it's nice. You've got a nice wide flat surface you can press those in. Now we're gonna just leave those be and now we're gonna press in the side seams. On drapery fabric, this is really easy because there is a very clear place that you are supposed to press in. And here I am just pressing in that whole seam allowance area like this. Now, the one thing you'll notice on a more embellished fabric is that the seam allowance is a bit, I don't know, for lack of a better word, a little bit, it can be a little bit waffly. It can be a little bit uneven. Like you're already seeing that right here on this one. I've got some here, some up here. So you really just kind of have to work with that and sort of decide kind of what your personal comfort level is with that. But sometimes you will end up with a slightly off seam allowance like this one is. It's, it's not uncommon. Now I'm gonna press that in and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna press this in like this into itself to create a doubled hem. This will be my side hem. And I'm just taking that hem and I'm pressing it in like this, folding it into itself. Here we go. Okay. Now up here, it's going to be a little bit bigger. This is just one of the vagaries of using these, some of these fabrics. Okay. Now I'm going to take and stitch that first side at the sewing machine. Just like the line drapery video, you're going to want to set your sewing machine to a larger stitch width, um, stitch length, sorry, stitch length. And you're going to want to use um, just basic sewing thread is fine. 
use the most invisible color you can. So like on this one, I'm using an off-white because it'll sort of be the most invisible. And when you sew a curtain or something like this, it's a lot of fabric to manage. Try and get as much of it onto your table or work surface as you can so that that weight is not pulling your stitching out of alignment. I also keep my used sewing machine needles. When I take the sewing machine needles out, they're a little bit dulled or, you know, whatever. They, get, they need to be changed every so often. I use that to press in little micro pleats in place as I'm sewing and it helps ease in especially on a fabric like this where the embroidered fabric is really pulling on that linen and there's a little bit extra seam allowance going on there. So I'm using this to just put in these little tiny almost ease pleats. There we go. And I'm going to bring this all the way up. I'm gonna stitch that there. Okay, there we go. Okay. And now I'm gonna go do the other side. And so now you have a really nice finished seam. The back side looks like it's finished because you've got that nice um, seam allowance. If you are using a fabric that does not have, that is not drapery fabric, allow two inches for the seam allowance. Give yourself that nice big amount of space for the seam allowance because it's a lot of what makes a curtain look more professional is that really big old seam allowance. So now we're gonna press in this other side. I tend to just, I tend to go and sew the one side once I've pressed it just because it just is almost easier. There's a lot of pressing and so it's like, oh, well, I'll just come back and do this one. Now this one also, wow, this one has a ton of like seam allowance going on here. And that's also not uncommon in drapery fabrics, that one side will have a little bit more seam allowance than the other. It's totally fine. You're, you're not really gonna notice it. And you know, if you have company come over and they're like, you know, they're so concerned about how perfect the seam allowance is on your drapes, you need new friends. So you just don't wanna worry too much about this. Don't get too obsessed about it. And the other thing is as I'm pressing, you'll notice I am not pushing, I am lifting and setting. I'm doing it quickly, so it's probably a little bit hard to see that technique, but that's really important when you are working on a long length of fabric that you do not uh, push your iron along. If you push your iron along, you are pushing the fabric out of true. Um, you're pushing it basically to almost go on the bias and you don't want that so you want to lift and push I'm almost lifting and pulling back a little bit lifting and pulling back a bit, little bit I feel like I should almost do a whole video on iron technique, but iron techniques are really big deal in sewing knowing how to use your iron Okay, now I'm gonna do that other side Here we go Get that set up there And you'll notice here like already the fabric, I'm really fighting the fabric. It's a lot of fabric, it's heavy. And I wanna make sure that it doesn't like pull my, my machine off. And right about that point is when I'm having to put that, use the little extra blunt needle, kind of press in those little ease pleats. How often you do that is really gonna depend on your machine's tension and a lot of different factors. You'll notice that I'm working on a professional sewing machine. So it is, my, my cast iron machine is set in a table. That is hugely helpful for drapes. But again, not a lot of home seamstresses have them. If you have a home sewing machine and you plan on doing a lot of drapes, then I would probably recommend you can get these little like tabletop things that fit around a home machine and give you a flatter surface. And that's really helpful when you're sewing large, long pieces of fabric. Okay, there we go. Back tack. Oh, one of my other things, it's always much more professional to trim your threads on each side. Don't just reach out and pull and trim your threads. It doesn't look nice. So now we're gonna go back and we're almost done. This is so easy. Curtains are really fun. Um, and you can do use all different sorts of things for curtains. 
If you use a lighter cotton fabric and you want it to have a little bit more structure, then you can interface the fabric. I actually did that for my daughter's room when she was little. I actually just took basic cotton lawn fabric because it was this really pretty design and I just used the woven interfacing and basically made a thicker fabric by interfacing the cotton lawn. Okay, so now I've pressed both sides again because one pressing is never enough. So we're gonna press that. And when you press like this again after you've done it, it sets the seam and it also evens out any of those little ease plates you put in with the blunt needle. They're gonna be really nice and eased out. Okay. Now, I'm gonna, all I have left to do is sew the bottom and the top hem. This top I have designed to be used with drapery panels. If you wanted to use, say, a curtain, um, so I'm just folding this back on itself. One of the reasons I like this technique is that you can use drapery pins. So now all I'm doing is to press that top facing down that I already pressed in place. So it's just a matter of sort of popping it in place again, like that. The great thing about this is we're gonna just sew it right here, which means you could put this on a drapery rod if you wanted. I'm gonna use drapery pins. I would love to show this to you actually on the drapery hardware, but there is a supply shortage of drapery hardware right now. So I'm gonna have my beautiful curtains sitting around and I'm just gonna look at them until the drapery hardware comes in like six weeks. It's a long time. But at least I can get drapery hardware, so that's good. Now I'm pinning across the top because I wanna make sure this all stays in place, nice and neat. So I'm using pins. I'm pinning about every 10 to 12 inches. I don't tend to use a lot of pins when I sew. Use more pins though if that's what makes you comfortable. Use as many pins as you want. It's just in professional sewing, we learn not to use pins because if you run over a pin with your industrial machine, it can throw off your timing and totally shut you down for the whole day. So we try to be really careful about using pins. Okay, so now I'm gonna put that back in here. That's my top hem and I am just going to stitch across it. Now here, I'm very much, I'm being careful about having as much of that fabric up there as possible, because if this falls right now, it's gonna be kind of, it's gonna be chaos. And then I'm watching for that pin. I'm holding it in place, and I'm noticing that a little bubble of fabric is forming, so I'm gonna use that ease pleat, ease pleat technique again. Going to the next one. If you're new to sewing too, go, go really slow. I mean, I know I make this look fast, but I have almost four decades of sewing experience and 25 of them on an industrial machine. So I make this look easy, but go slow and you'll get the job done. And curtains really are one of probably the very best things you can learn to sew first. Drapery, learning to sew your own drapes will save you thousands of dollars. Plus you can have a ton of fun like finding all sorts of cool drapery fabrics. Um, for a long time one of my favorite places to find drapery fabrics was the Goodwill like where the tablecloths and all the fabric is. One time I scored a whole set of Pottery Barn linen floor length drapes and I used those drapes in all sorts of different ways over the years and cut them down and remade them and all sorts of things. Okay the great thing about drapes and curtains too is it's nice flat pieces of fabric. You can take them with you. You know, if you're renting and you want to have like a little bit of color and a little bit of something in your space to make it feel like yours, make some inexpensive curtains. It's a great way to go. My, my oldest daughter was in a temporary rental for about six months and she was like, oh, I just can't stand it. And so I went up to visit her. I went to Joann's. I found $5 a yard fabric made her curtains in like one afternoon and she had the curtains there. And then the landlord was like really happy to have them afterwards. So her, putting, putting textiles in your environment can just be such a great way to make it feel like home. Okay, so I've just, that's the top panel. I've done that. That one's pressed, ready to go. When I go to install this curtain panel, I will place drapery pins. Let me grab a drapery pin. These are drapery pins. Okay, you can buy them on Amazon, they're really inexpensive. And what they do is that this will go into the fabric. I will position this in the fabric, actually I'll position one here at the end, and it goes up like this, 
and that will then hook through the little rings on your drapery hardware. Drapery pins are great because you can take them out when you eventually want to clean the curtains. So there's that. Now I'm going to turn it around and put that last hem in place. And this is the bottom hem. And this one I'm going to turn up. I'm going to go ahead and just hit this again with the iron because, you know, why not? Just to make sure I've got everything positioned where I want it. And double check. Yeah, because see, I'm a little off there. I was like, whoops, that's not where I want it. Okay, great. I'm going to hit that one more time with the iron. Just to be absolutely certain that's where I want it to be. Pull up that side. There we go. Make sure this one's right at the corners. You don't want droopy corners on your drapes. So there we go. Okay, now I'm going to sew this last seam, uh, last hem. This is the bottom hem. And it doesn't really matter what order you do the top or the bottom hem in. You can do... Um, Sorry, I'm catching a little thread there that I'm seeing. You can do the top or bottom hem first on a curtain panel. On line drapery, it makes a difference. You need to do the bottom hem first. But on a curtain panel, it doesn't really matter because you're not you don't have a lining that you're dealing with. Okay, we're almost done. We're on the home stretch. So really in an afternoon, you could make curtains for some, you know, room in your house. And you could, you know, go to Goodwill, find some cool old fabric, um, buy some neat fabric online, and there's just so much you can add to your living environment with draperies and curtains. If you have the extra fabric, you can make some throw pillows, put it on a backpack, or make a patch out of it. I'll do all sorts of fun things, so. Okay, so that's the last one done. And again, even after I've sewn this, what are we gonna do? We're gonna press it again because it just keeps setting that hem and making it look really, really professional. So I'm gonna take that drapery panel and I'm gonna put it up here. And you can see it looks good, but it doesn't look great. But once I put this last press in and I'm pressing from the right side, and I'm really setting that fabric, that's when you get that really professional look because it kind of, the steam eases in any of the like excess, makes your hem look crisp and finished. And there you go. And let me hold up the finished drape and show you. And this is the one of the finished of the pair that I'll be making for my bathroom. So that's just a finished drapery curtain. Thanks for watching.